I want to show you a method for modeling a system in non-uniform acceleration. In this case, there's a drag force. So as the speed increases, the drag force is going to increase. So here's our data. We have time. We have y, which is a vertical position. And we have calculated from that a velocity. And velocity versus time is what's plotted here. So you can see it starts out, it looks like it's in nice uniform acceleration. The velocity versus time graph is a straight line. But then down here it maximizes out. It gets to some maximum or terminal velocity, we would say. So uniform acceleration seems to explain this motion up until about, uh, it's moving about 1.5 meters per second. It's about two tenths of a second into the fall. So there's a lot of uh, change here between uniform acceleration and this region. This method is not exact, but it is a good approximation and it's simple to do with Excel. Here's a slide I've prepared earlier. So I've guessed on this some initial velocity, and we can say that the uh, velocity at some time i is equal to the previous velocity, i minus 1, plus the gravitational acceleration and times the time interval. In the case of uniform acceleration, this is exactly true. And so you can see this velocity I've calculated, this is with no drag force, it simply increases every time step. Let's take a look at uh, what's calculated here. So d3 is the previous velocity, that's the v sub i minus 1. h2 is the gravitational acceleration, and h4 is the time interval. This is actually uh, just calculated from here. You could do it other ways. And you can see each of these steps increases. Notice that I'm using the dollar signs here for absolute cell references. So I wrote this equation in this cell, and I was just able to copy it down. With the dollar sign around it, the uh, value of the cell reference doesn't change. So h2 and h4 stay the same, even though the others are changing. And you can see I've plotted it as a line here. You can see it uh, seems to explain the data well. It models uh, at, at these low speeds, but then up here it uh, starts being less good. So we're going to modify what we're doing, and we're going to add a term. So this stuff is all the same. Initial velocity, or the previous velocity, gravitational acceleration, and then here we have a term that is proportional to the square of the velocity. So we're taking the gravitational acceleration and we're subtracting some constant times the velocity squared times delta t, the time step. And here's the slide I prepared earlier. So here's our drag coefficient. Let's take a look at how I wrote that. Now I've collected the delta t's, which is this uh, h4 form uh, term here over on the side, and uh, combined the velocity squared so that's C3, or sorry, E3. This drag coefficient term, H6, and H2 gravity just added together there. And what you can see is I get something that looks functionally like what I was looking for, but it doesn't fit very well. So the suggestion for this exercise is to just manually fit this. So this is coming to a halt more quickly, or reaching its terminal velocity more quickly. Um, so we're going to decrease that. If I decrease that to 1, you can see it doesn't quite make it. And just by playing around with this, you can uh, pretty easily come up with something that seems to model the data pretty well. See how precise you want it to be. And you've modeled the drag coefficient.